This is the second in a series of videos on the page technique based as it applies not only to manic depression but also to other diseases. Uh, most of the leading work in uh, diet and nutrition in the past 50 years has curiously been done by uh, dentists. You have Weston Price who wrote uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration where he studied the uh, nutritional status of um, primitive uh, tribes and, and, and the effect it had, the uh, a civilized diet had on their dental arches and dental health and their general health. The second would be uh, Dr. Melvin Page who expanded on the work, who was actually a student of Dr. Price and expanded on his work into new fields. And the third would be Royal Lee who was also a dentist and he uh, established uh, the, probably the premier company in whole food uh, supplements in the United States today. It's called Standard Process. So Page became a, was a student of Dr. Price as I said and Price said that people who were sick and had uh, a lot of diseases had abnormal calcium values. Well Page expanded on this concept and said that really the People who were sick or had degenerative diseases had, a, had an improper, improper calcium to phosphorus ratio. And so what he did was he studied 25 healthy nurses in Michigan who had no cavities or tooth decay or any other diseases and weren't taking any medications and he did blood tests on them. He found out that serum calcium and phosphorus were in a ratio of two and a half to one. So this became known as the page ratio. So if the serum calcium is 10, then the phosphorus should be 4. And he postulated that if your glands are in perfect balance, you'll have this ratio. So he used this ratio to substantiate his graph measurements and also to uh, determine dosages of supplements. So some people ask, well, what makes you think that Page was right with his measurement system? Well, this is why he thought he was right. So these are two of the tools he used, would be the anthropometric measurements and the uh, uh, Page ratio, or the calcium to phosphorus ratio. In other words, if someone has a serum calcium of 10 and a phosphorus of 2.5, and, and the graph shows that they're low in posterior pituitary, and you put them on a controlled diet for three days with a 12-hour fast and you give them a little posterior pituitary and you recheck the calcium and the phosphorus and if it goes from say 10.0 to 3.5 then this is a better ratio. So it's a very precise system to determine, to determine dosages. Dosages is as small as 1 12 thousandths of a milligram of, testosterone, of uh, estrogen can be tested or one eight hundredth of a milligram of pituitary can be tested. So the dosages are, dosages are very small and they can be tested very accurately using the, calcium, the page ratio. Another tool that Page used was a that, what we call a midget urometer. Uh, this is it right here. So he used this when checking on the posterior pituitary gland. So you put urine into here and then fill it up uh, with urine and then put this little barber in here and then you can get the specific gravity of the urine. The posterior pituitary gland has two hormones coming from it. You have oxytocin and vasopressin. Vasopressin is the antidiuretic hormone so that if you're low in posterior pituitary you have frequency of urination and the specific gravity of your urine is going to be low. So Page used this as a guide to determine his dosages and it's an excellent tool that you can use with children because you don't need to do blood tests. So that he found that the ideal, race, the ideal range for the specific gravity of the urine should be 1.018 to 1.022. Ideally the value should be 1.022. So if you go on a controlled diet for three days or a day or two even and don't drink any caffeine or no diuretics and if you aren't taking any medications 
if you check the urine specific gravity when you go to bed at night and the first thing in the morning, it should be the range of 1.018 to 1.022. Now, some people use the specific gravity test strips, but I prefer this little midget urometer because I, for, I feel that it's more accurate. So what are some of the external signs of posterior pituitary gland deficiency? Well, these, these signs won't be always as apparent in children, but uh, as you become an adult, they become very obvious. Uh, you can have a uh, sign of posterior pituitary gland deficiency would be a double hip curve, especially in women. They can have unwanted facial hair, so if you see anyone with a, a female with a mustache, you know, it's just low in posterior pituitary. Uh, in males who have the baldness gene, they're going to have a bald spot. We have a bald spot at the crown of their head. There can be a double chin appearance and a pot belly. These are some of the obvious signs of posterior pituitary gland deficiency. So what does posterior pituitary gland deficiency besides causing depression and manic depression, what else does it cause? It can cause osteoporosis, periodontal disease, inflamed gums, high blood pressure, hypersexuality, spontaneous abortion and difficulty uh, becoming pregnant, unwanted facial hair in women, frequency of urination, they have a high tooth decay rate. There can be acne problems. You can have type 2 diabetes. And there can be weight problems. Now, when with the, uh, there's increasing weight problems in the United States today, and that's uh, why I think, I think that's because posterior pituitary deficiency is on the increase. If the anterior pituitary is also underactive, then the weight problems are worse. So what can you do right now to help your pituitary gland or find out what your pituitary gland is doing first? In my book, The Hormone Mess, there is a uh, the page uh, measurement system is in there and you can figure out what your posterior pituitary gland is doing as well as other glands. So that's measuring yourself. You can do some things to with diet to help protect your posterior pituitary gland. At the International Foundation for Nutrition and Health, www.ifnh.org, the uh, page food plan is listed. So you can download that. And if you're doing any blood testing, you can go on phase one of that plan and check your calcium, serum calcium, and phosphorus value and see what it is, and your blood sugar. You can easily do this by contacting uh, lifeextensionfoundation.org, www.lifeextensionfoundation.org, and you can order your own blood test. You can get a blood chemistry and a CBC, and this will give you a lot of values to check out, and, but also what you want to check is the serum, calcium, and phosphorus ratio and your blood sugar. Ideal blood sugar value should be 85. So you can do a blood test, you can measure yourself, do blood tests, and you can follow the page. When you do the blood test, you should be on the phase one of that page uh, food plan. Be on that for three days. Don't take any medications. Uh, do a 12-hour fast, and then do the blood test. And that's